atrocities. The first is, and I'll be going through each one of these, dehumanizing rhetoric. The second echo is the placing of the value of human life, not on one's existence, but on the form or function of that life, or the feelings of others. The third echo is the involvement of physicians in the killing and the use of medical experimentation. The fourth echo is the very systematic nature of the killings. And the fifth echo, the numbers, the huge quantities of human beings who are killed. So the first comparison, the first echo then, is dehumanizing rhetoric. Hitler said the following about Jews. He is and remains the typical parasite, a sponger who, like a noxious bacillus, keeps spreading as soon as a favorable medium invites him in. In 1942, the Nazi propagandists called for the elimination of these parasites. In Rwanda, the Hutu extremists described Tutsis as cockroaches.
going to eliminate something or someone who was harming another was also used by those who supported the Holocaust. I recommend that you all get this book by Robert J. Lifton, The Nazi Doctor's Medical Killing and the Psychology of Genocide. And at one point in the book, it says the following by uh, someone who was involved with the killings of a physician, a Nazi physician. And the physician was asked, how do you reconcile these, these uh, buildings you have where you're killing people, you're burning them, uh, how do you reconcile that with your Hippocratic oath as a doctor? And this Nazi physician replied, of course I am a doctor and I want to preserve life. And out of respect for human life, I would remove a gangrenous appendix from a diseased body. The Jew is the gangrenous appendix in the body of mankind. Notice that this physician rationalizes doing great evil on the basis that somehow there is some evil that needs to be removed, not a person with dignity. And that's exactly what Eileen McDonough is doing in her rhetoric. Not that there's a valuable person here, but an aggressor. Someone who's doing something gravely evil, and that needs to be removed. The dehumanizing rhetoric in the abortion debate uh, can also be paralleled, or can, can be, it is framed in terms of denial of personhood. And I touched on that briefly when I talked about humans and persons and when life begins. And that is a parallel between abortion and historical atrocities. We saw in the United States, uh, in the eyes of the law, the slave is not a person. The 1858 uh, Virginia Supreme Court decision. Then also in the United States, uh, the idea that an Indian is not a person within the meaning of the Constitution. Then in Great Britain, the United States, Canada, and of course a big part of the world, in this case, the British Voting Rights case, 1989, the statutory word person did not in these circumstances include women. So we see the word person once being used to define whether you're black or white, or whether you were uh, native or not native, and now we're seeing it find whether you were a man or a woman. And then, of course, the Holocaust, the right group itself, refused to recognize Jews as legal persons in the, in the sense uh, in the same sense, in the legal sense, sorry. And then, of course, we have presently in Canada, the law of Canada does not recognize the unborn child as a legal person possessing rights. So historically, where personhood was denied, perhaps based on the skin color, presently personhood is denied the unborn based on their age, simply because they're younger. So the, the first echo of the Holocaust is the dehumanizing rhetoric. The second echo is placing the value of human beings on that individual's appearances, abilities, or how I feel towards the individual rather than that individual's existence. When I was at the Holocaust Memorial Museum, they had a display dedicated specifically to the euthanasia projects of the Nazis. And in that exhibit, they said the Nazis regarded physically and mentally disabled persons as lives unworthy of life. Lives unworthy of life. In other words, the Nazis didn't say, oh, if you're a human, you're valuable by virtue of your existence. No, no, no. It was what your associations were. It was what your appearance was. It was what your abilities were. And if there were certain individuals which didn't have certain abilities, well, they were lives unworthy of living. That is no different from our modern-day concept of quality. 